morning, everybody. I'm uh, Elias Yoris. I, uh, I, uh, I'm from the UK, not originally. I, I originally, I'm from, uh, from Greece, uh, but in the last 12 years or so, I'm uh, based in the UK in a place called Bolton. Bolton is next to, the, uh, uh, next to Manchester. In fact, we are considered to be greater Manchester. Uh, my talk is going to be on smart functional materials for energy, from uh, laboratory to commercialization. And I'll give you an example of uh, 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 such a platform technology that can find applications in different, uh, in different uh, areas and in different industries. Uh, the, there are two logos there. One is uh, University of Bolton. University of Bolton dates back to 1825. It's, uh, roughly about 190 years old uh, university. It didn't, of course, operate as university back then. Uh, it's in the last, it's since 2006 that it became a university. It was a, 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 an institute which was established <coughs> for service, servicing the local uh, industrial community. The local industrial community was in textiles, in textile revolution did start from uh, from uh, Bolton that's a little bit of history behind the uh, behind the place uh, most of the uh, uh, patents for the first uh, automated machinery for textiles came from uh, from that area so there's a lot of history on uh, fibers and textiles and the very first uh, 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 polyester fiber uh, started from uh, ICI, as you may know, uh, uh, many, many years ago. The other logo is uh, Fiberlec. Fiberlec is the company that uh, 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 has taken up all the uh, uh, intellectual property rights that we developed at Bolton University regarding this uh, energy fiber. Uh, right. Uh, we are part of a bigger entity. Uh, uh, is, it, is, is there a pointer somewhere? We, we are part of a bigger entity called the Knowledge Center for Materials Chemistry. There are three universities involved. Uh, Manchester University, two departments, physics, including uh, uh, the, the, uh, the graphene people, and also chemistry department. Uh, the other university is Liverpool University with uh, uh, chemistry department. And the other entity is STFC Dasbury, which is uh, the uh, national uh, research center in the UK. It's the second National Research Center. The other one is based at Oxford. So it is a virtual uh, research center, a uh, single point of contact for uh, 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 to four leading uh, research institutions, uh, proactive in formulating and delivering uh, projects. There are about 150 different projects that we undertake every year, and they range from uh, small ones, six months, to about uh, uh, three-year projects. Uh, and uh, we have a dedicated project scientist. There are about uh, more than 100 people involved in uh, more, more more than 100 people involved in this uh, knowledge center. Uh, I'm going to be talking about a hybrid type of uh, structure that we have created and it emanated from our smart materials uh, group. Unfortunately, this is on a, yeah, uh, uh, unfortunately, this is on an automatic thing and I have to go uh, uh, back every now and then. Uh, the type of uh, uh, smart materials that we are involved in, they range from the uh, very simple ones like thermochromic materials into oxetic type of materials. I'll show you an oxetic uh, structure. The best way to uh, Very 
first fibers on oxetic materials were developed in our laboratories. Foams were then developed, and uh, now we are moving into more uh, complicated structures uh, with various applications. Uh, the other uh, uh, set of uh, materials are the photovoltaic ones. I'm going to talk about them in a minute. Uh, there are two groups within the Institute. One is dealing with the high-end uh, photovoltaic materials, uh, i.e. those that the conversion uh, factor is quite, uh, quite high or they try to increase it. In our case, the other group is looking at uh, the low-end, i.e. the less expensive, not made out of uh, uh, ceramic uh, uh, materials. And the same group is dealing with piezo piezoelectric. So I'm going to be talking about a hybrid material which is both piezoelectric and photovoltaic and I'll start with the piezoelectric. Uh, direct piezoelectric effect uh, when you uh, uh, change in electric polarization with a change in applied stress. Uh, 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 the converse effect is may, may, maybe the one known to everybody. This is the classical ultrasou ultrasound type. Uh, it hasn't been developed by us. It has been developed since 1817 by uh, uh, Charles Coulomb. Further developed in the 80s uh, and in 1946, the uh, barium titanate was the cornerstone of uh, 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 piezoelectric materials, followed by lead zirconate titanate, or PZT, in 1952. Uh, another important development was in 1969 in Japan, uh, where the very first uh, PVDF, uh, polyvinyl uh, fluoride material, was, uh, was developed. Uh, there are naturally occurring piezoelectric materials, uh, which when you bang them, they give uh, a small voltage output. Uh, uh, bone is one uh, that doesn't mean that you will start bashing your bones to get any uh, voltage output, but uh, they do behave uh, uh, with a less, lesser degree of piezoelectricity. Tendons, silk, wood, etc., etc. We are moving into uh, uh, quartz down here, which is the, the, the one that has been widely used in uh, uh, watchmaking uh, electronics industry. Looking at the synthetic man-made piezoelectric materials now, they are into two categories, the ceramic-based and the uh, uh, polymers. Uh, from the ceramic, uh, oops, sorry. From the ceramic ones, uh, the one that stands out is the PZ, PZ, PZT uh, uh, with relatively established uh, uh, piezoelectric uh, properties, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. And then on, the si on this side, we have the polymers uh, starting from PVF or P PVDF also. But there are other uh, uh, certain polymers that they exhibit, they can exhibit uh, uh, piezoelect piezoelectricity. Uh, even nylon can, and certain uh, uh, ni nylon, uh, nylons can exhibit it better than others. The odd number nylons, five, seven, nine, and 11, uh, they are uh, uh, better than, uh, than, uh, than the rest. Oops. Uh, this fly is persistent. <laughs> okay, why do we need uh, uh, piezoelectric polymers? We know that they are not doing their job as the ceramic ones. Uh, the conversion factor is much less than the uh, ceramic one. However, if you look at the problems that we have with ceramics, existing ceramic-based fibers are uh, uh, PZT. They are very brittle. They cannot be knitted or woven, and they need to be embedded uh, inside a further polymer matrix. This is the actual matrix. You can make them up to 30 centimeters in, in length, but uh, if you bend them more than 30, 30 degrees angle, they, they, they break. So you cannot have them in, in, uh, in, uh, in big, bigger lengths. Uh, the polymer-based fibers, this is the one that we have developed in our uh, uh, laboratory. They're extremely flexible. Uh, the mechanical strength is quite good. Uh, uh, 
PVDF is renowned for its uh, 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 strength uh, uh, properties, uh, can be knitted, woven into two-dimensional and three-dimensional structures um, they, which can provide a, a, a high level of comfort for wearable applications. If we look at the piezo properties now of, uh, uh, let's say, PVDF film and PZT, the, you can see there's no, there, there, there's no, co there's no comparison. Uh, if you look at D3, D31, for example, the PVDF has got one fifth of what the, uh, the ceramic has. Uh, this is as it as it was in film structures, not what we have made, and I'll show you how much we have improved this number, 23. Uh, uh, in the rest of the properties, they are much superior for PZT rather than PVDF. And barium titanate, to a, certain, to a certain extent, behaves much better, as you can see, D31 is 78 as compared to 23. Uh, this is what you find, by the way, the values in, in, in books, not in uh, what we have developed. Uh, over the years, uh, people have been fascinated with uh, piezoelectric na nano generators. And uh, a historical overview is that back in, sorry, back in 2006, the highest you could uh, squeeze out of uh, these nano generators was, uh, was nine, nine millivolts. Uh, over the years, this has improved, and now you can get 57 volts from very complicated and expensive uh, uh, structures. And they, these structures, they do contain uh, uh, ceramic-based uh, uh, piezoelectric materials, uh, in addition to some of the other very expensive and scarce uh, uh, materials like ITO. Uh, so over the years, we, we have seen these nano, nano generators in, in, in improving. Uh, <coughs> going back into the PVDF, uh, what it is, long chain semi-crystalline uh, uh, polymer, which has got uh, 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 four phases, uh, uh, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta phases. Uh, the most important ones for us is alpha and beta phase. Uh, alpha, alpha phase is centrosymmetric. In beta phase, uh, the cells are packed in parallel, uh, parallel planes. The more beta phase you have in the PVDF uh, material, the better, the, the, the better it is. Yeah? Uh, the better it is because the conversion factor is higher. However, you have to have the so-called permanent dipoles within the structure so that uh, uh, this structure is, uh, uh, stays there uh, uh, permanently. Uh, the way you can take uh, granules of uh, PVDF, by the way, PVDF material has been used in construction industry for moving uh, 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 for uh, uh, moving sand uh, and bricks and mortar in the construction site, so it's quite uh, uh, quite tough uh, tough material in many many respects. Uh, this is PVDF in uh, in uh, in granules. This is the alpha phase, and what we want to do is convert it into beta phase as inexpensively as possible uh, and make it into a. a uh, a, fi a, fi a continuous, uh, continuous fiber. So this is an extrusion machine. This is the hopper. On top of the hopper, you put these uh, granules. Uh, uh, the temperature goes up to Curie temperature, and then stretching occurs at the same time. There are basically three, uh, 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 three uh, uh, aspects of making a, a PVDF Turning, it, turning PVDF into P, uh, sorry, piezoelectric PVDF. Uh, high stretching ratio, high voltage, and elevated temperature. The elevated temperature is just around Curie temperature. The high voltage uh, machine is further down the line here. This is where the, the, uh, the, the fiber comes out. Uh, we apply anywhere between 10,000 10, uh, volts to 20,000 volts, no, no current 
and the idea is we we permanently uh, 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 orient the, uh, the the dipoles within within the structure. So it's th th this machine. There's nothing nothing special about it. It's a normal extrusion machine, and what we add is the high voltage part to turn it into uh, uh, permanent. Uh, 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 PVDF, piezoelectric. Uh, you can do, though, you can turn PVDF into uh, piezo uh, without the high voltage, but this does not last for long. The way to do it is you quench it uh, uh, very, very quickly after you raise it into Curie temperature. Yeah. Uh, this is one of our latest papers uh, that we, we produced. Uh, <coughs> So now trying to find uh, uh, where about is this uh, temperature, uh, uh, they, they uh, of course it depends from material to material and from, uh, uh, so if you look at the uh, heat flow against the uh, temperature, there is, a, there is an area here of about anywhere between 170 to 175 degrees where this temperature tra transformation takes place for a PVDF, so within this range, you can turn it into piezo. If you look at the drawing ratio, uh, uh, then you you can find that around five is the the, the magic number for a, for a, uh, for a, for PVDF. In other words, you you stretch it five times the original, yeah? and that will that will give you the uh, piezo effect. Uh, you've got to have uh, a high beta phase uh, uh, concentration, and we've, man we've managed to go up to 90, 90%. It is very hard to extract that 10% extra because nothing is pure. So uh, uh, the PVDF granules you put in cannot get you into, uh, into the next 10% uh, regime. Yep. Uh, We've done some analysis there, XRD and FTIR measurements for making sure that we are getting the right beta, beta phase. Uh, I'll skip that. Uh, uh, when you look at the uh, fiber now, and you, when you look at the stretching direction, uh, what tends to happen is uh, uh, we create a very smooth surface. This is a condition for putting a, a, a photovoltaic cell on top. It's got to be extremely smooth. Any, uh, any imperfections will, will, will damage the, uh, the photovoltaic cell effect, and it will not give you any, any output. Yep. So the, the outcome from, uh, from our studies uh, it was, uh, was excellent. The high beta phase monofilaments up to 90%, as I said, and the D3 uh, coefficient reached uh, uh, nearly twice as much as what the books say. Uh, <coughs> however, we improved it further. Uh, one, uh, one of the problems was that uh, if you're making a fiber which is uh, uh, piezoelectric in a continuous mode, you, you do not know which one is positive and which one is negative. So you've got to wire it accordingly. Uh, the further problem is uh, that uh, if you try to wire it with uh, normal uh, electrodes, as in this case on, on films, you, 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 you end up with uh, breakages, you end up with failures at the interface between the electrode and the, uh, and the fiber. Uh, and I will explain in a minute how we have uh, overcome this, uh, this, uh, these obstacles. Uh, what we have managed to do, though, is uh, we have managed to create a, a, 3D, uh, a 3D structure, which you can uh, see here. Uh, I'll, I'll pass it around so you can, you can play with. Uh, uh, you can put as much force as you like. Well, do not use a knife or uh, whatever. But, uh, has got uh, uh, piezoelectric. This is running too fast for me. Uh, uh, so basically what we, what we are trying to do is we, we, we try to put these fibers into a continuous process, uh, which is knitting process, using this big machine here, and 
to create a structure, either a two-dimensional structure or a three-dimensional structure. In this case, what I'm passing around is the 3D structure, and I will explain what it has. Uh, so what this 3D structure has is uh, uh, a silver thread or a silver fiber, which is top and bottom, yeah? uh, and in between we have the PVDF uh, fiber. Uh, this is actually the, PV, the PVDF in the middle, and you can see it being uh, uh, knitted in this type of uh, uh, form. The reason why you need that is you, you need to create, a, create this cushion type of effect. Remember, piezoelectric materials, uh, when you uh, press it, you not create any voltage. When you release it and they go back, that's when you create the, uh, the voltage. Yeah? So you need to have this effect embedded in the, uh, in the, in the structure. In two-dimensional structures, which are very thin, all you have to do is use it as a flag, which means you, 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 uh, you, you, you induce the, the pressure via different, uh, different means. Uh, and these are the two people uh, that uh, uh, came up with this structure, Professor Sebastian Ann, uh, again, uh, and, and, and uh, Professor Tahir uh, Sa. Both of them, they're working at uh, our institute. Uh, <coughs> we then try to look at how fast we can make this structure and maintain the mechanical and physical and chemical properties of this structure. So uh, uh, we tried different production rates and we came up with the best one, uh, 500 meters per minute. This is the 3D structure that I'm passing around, which is quite adequate for a... a, a uh, utilizing it in, in, in textile uh, applications. Yeah? This is the fiber. In terms of the spacer, it's 70 square meters per, uh, per hour. The process becomes slightly slow, but if you look at the structure, it's very complicated. Uh, remember, as I said before, the positive and negative side, when you are pulling the fiber, is very difficult to control. But this structure makes this, this irrelevant. Uh, um, so the, the advantages of this, excellent compression and resilience uh, uh, properties, uh, all fiber, fiber technology, lightweight and completely flexible, looks and feels no different to ordinary fabrics. Well, it's a little bit of an overstated claim, but uh, uh, you, you can judge us. Uh, uh, now, how do we harvest the energy out of it? You just compress it. Uh, in other words, you, you, you jump on it or you punch it. Uh, uh, however, you can do other things. You can allow uh, droplets of uh, water to, uh, to, uh, to hit it. Uh, we have simulated uh, rain and we produced uh, good results every time a droplet say of a size relative, let's say two millimeters in diameter hits it from about one meter, it creates one, one to 1.45 volts. Uh, so it, 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 it's not bad piezoelectric uh, uh, converter of, uh, of energy. Uh, I, I must say that the reason why we are into piezoelectrics more for converting energy is uh, uh, <coughs> Bolton being a town for uh, 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 manipulating cotton yeah, it had to have a moist environment. Yeah? So it rains a lot there. So we don't get too much sun. That's why we had to uh, 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 put our emphasis on the piezo side. Okay. Uh, basically what these uh, uh, slides are telling you is uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the output of uh, 2D uh, uh, structures are quite good, but the output from 3D structures are excellent. And in this case, you are not creating sing single peaks. The problem with harnessing the piezoelectric uh, energy is because when you hit it, it comes up with a, with a, with a, uh, with a spike. The energy created is the area under that spike. Yeah? So if the spike is like this, you've got to somehow make it like this. Or if you can create continuous spikes, i.e., this effect here, then you've, sort, you've sorted the, the problem of uh, data acquisition or energy uh, type of uh, acquisition and storage. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, some of the uh, 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 other properties, uh, uh, flexular rigidity. It's quite quite flexed, as you can uh, as you as you can see. Uh, uh, and we've we've tested it against uh, British uh, British standards. Uh, uh, <coughs> now. Moving away from textbook uh, uh, structures now and into the new uh, type of uh, uh, developments in our laboratories, uh, uh, zinc stannate is one of the nanoparticles that we blend within the structure. And the, uh, the contributions of uh, zinc stannate are quite low. Uh, up to five, uh, up to five percent. Anything more than ten percent, then you compromise the uh, 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 bending properties of the uh, of the fiber, and of course you compromise the uh, the looks or the looks of the uh, the fiber in terms of uh, coloration. So uh, this is what we've tried uh, recently, and the re re results have been uh, uh, quite good. Uh, change in phase of four percent. Uh, gives it gives us a, a D33 of 127. That is nearly the same as the PZT. So with, with, with slight additions of zinc stannate, you, you can reach the uh, uh, PZT type of uh, uh, outputs uh, in up to nine volts. Uh, products. Uh, what we have done up to now, and this is coming out of our laboratories, Continuous piezoelectric PVDF monofilaments, uh, uh, multifilaments, and tapes. Uh, we have got more than five patents in terms of the fiber uh, uh, technology, in terms of the 3D structure, and in terms of the processing, and also the, 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 the electronics that accompany the, uh, the structures. So the first pattern was this one, creating a high beta phase within the structure with high spinning rates of 500 meters per minute. And then the other one was the, on the, on the uh, it says applied for, but uh, uh, we, we have got it a few months ago. Uh, Three-dimensional space technology, uh, excellent compression and resilience, all fiber technology, uh, lightweight and highly comfortable. Uh, in high production rates, up to 70 uh, square meters per hour. This is from one single machine. Yep. Uh, some of the applications now, uh, uh, treating uh, tremor, uh, 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 sufferers of uh, uh, tremor <coughs> uh, can benefit from this technology. This is a this is a glove. Uh, ba basically, what it does is it, it, it takes energy from movement and uh, uh, puts it back into the system to balance it. Maybe you have seen the same type of technology in uh, head uh, uh, rackets, uh, uh, tennis rackets, where to avoid tennis elbow, you have a, a, a film, piezoelectric. Sorry, two piezoelectric films. One. When you hit your ball, when you hit the ball, it takes all this energy, yeah, and gives it back into the other film, and the other film counterbalances the uh, the uh, the uh, the load. Uh, the beauty about our system is a, a single fiber takes the vibrations, and the same fiber uh, 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 with some clever uh, uh, electronics uh, counterbalances the. Uh, the load. So we don't need two films to, to do what head is doing. Uh, carpets. Uh, <coughs> uh, th this, this is the carpet in, uh, uh, I think it's Terminal 5 in at, he at Heathrow Airport. Uh, uh, the material can be used for uh, every time you, you step on it, uh, as, sorry, as a, a carpet under, under layer, so that you can, every time you, you, you step on it in areas where, where you've got plenty of people uh, uh, moving, uh, then you can uh, take up this energy and store it or use it, on, uh, use it online. Uh, uh, 
very, uh, uh, how can I put it, uh, uh, in, in, in application that it is, uh, springs to everybody's mind is, uh, what if I use it in shoes? Yeah, you, 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 you can, uh, uh, and you can, I can't remember how many, it says 60 paces, but it's not. It's nearly one kilometer you've got to run before you charge the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the mobile, yeah? So you've got to do a little bit of uh, fast, uh, uh, fast walking or uh, fast jumping. Uh, <coughs> uh, the, this one is an interesting one. Uh, you don't have to use it as, a, as a, uh, an energy conversion system, but you can use it as a, uh, a sensor. In other words, you can have a carpet where you have zoned it, and uh, depending on uh, who is walking on this carpet and at what pace they are walking, then you can evaluate the mood. For example, grandmother is walking very slowly today. That means she's not very happy, uh, or uh, 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 if she falls down, she will occupy more space, which means uh, 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 maybe I need to call someone. Uh, this is one of the applications that uh, we are moving very fast forward in, uh, in uh, elderly homes type of uh, uh, setup. <coughs> uh, Fiberlec, the company is moving uh, with, uh, I think it's Michelin, uh, 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 trying to create a, a smart tire where they, uh, one of the underlays is made out of uh, uh, PVDF uh, uh, fibers. And again, the idea is every time you go on a, on a hump or every time there are vibrations coming from the uh, tarmac, uh, you, you, you create energy. Uh, uh, Someone said, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's the problem is with the tire. It's round. You've got to make it square so you can get more, more, more energy out of it. Uh, some other applications are uh, every time you breathe, there is a, uh, you, you can find out, uh, 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 sorry, you can get uh, uh, enough uh, energy out of the system for potentially uh, using it in pacemakers. Yeah. If I can just conclude for the piezo part now, and then I'm going to talk about the photovoltaic. Uh, piezoelectric materials can convert energy, yep, uh, mechanical energy, but if you do not have uh, mechanical stimuli, then you can compensate with photo photovoltaic, yeah? Uh, uh, so this is what we try to do, try to combine the two uh, uh, energy harvesters into, into one. Okay, this is the structure that uh, we, we, we have achieved. Uh, this is in uh, bilayer heter heterojunction and bulk heterojunction uh, here. Sorry about that. <coughs> uh, and the, uh, the idea was to uh, coat the fiber with enough uh, 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 nano coatings on top to, so that it can provide a photovoltaic uh, uh, photovoltaic uh, uh, capabilities and retain its flexibility. Yeah? So the piezoelectric uh, uh, fiber uh, with uh, electrodes and insulator layer were, were sort of passed through a, an evaporator, uh, active layer, dying and annealing, buffer, again dying and annealing, electrode evaporation, protective layer, and then finally drying in order to create uh, uh, this structure that I'm going to show you both in terms of uh, films and in terms of uh, 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 fibers. You can see the film configuration here. Uh, <coughs> uh, they, it's got uh, 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 electrodes on top and this gives you the uh, dark coloration. And this is the, the one with copper electrodes that give you uh, this type of uh, coloration. And you can see how flexible the, 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 uh, the fiber is. Uh, it, it has passed through the uh, various uh, 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 photovoltaic uh, uh, tests in order to uh, identify under 
laboratory conditions, of course, uh, the energy that we, uh, we, uh, we generate. Uh, ITO can be used if you want to make it uh, transparent. Uh, uh, however, you are increasing uh, the, uh, the cost there. Uh, and uh, if you add, uh, sorry, if you add CNTs, uh, uh, then you can increase uh, its conversion uh, to approximately 18%. Uh, uh, but again, in, in, in real terms, it's only 2.53% uh, in terms of conversion. Yep. Uh, some of the applications of this technology, uh, Tata has been very, uh, uh, very collaborative with, uh, with us. They want to create roofing material so that uh, the 3D structure is placed on top so that we can get uh, solar and uh, uh, rain type of energy. Uh, uh, Lampos, this is another, uh, this is a project that is, uh, uh, this, this, this was one of the proof of very first proof of concept of applications. This is an interesting one. Uh, I am sure you have seen photovoltaic parks and the way they look. Uh, these flat structures embedded in a big area, uh, land landscape, uh, and uh, uh, trying to track the sun uh, all the time so that you can get the benefit of uh, the energy hitting it at a certain, uh, certain angle. Uh, however, they need cleaning, they need uh, maintenance, etc. Uh, our idea is to uh, create a tree structure where the fibers are the needles. Just imagine a pine tree where the needles are made out of, of, uh, of uh, our fiber. Uh, the uh, surface area is massive, so from one tree uh, you can get a lot of energy. You can get even more energy if you if you dress the stems with uh, aluminum foil so you can get uh, reflections or you can get more energy by putting mirrors underneath so that you can multiply the, uh, the, uh, the effect. Yep. Uh, this, is a, this is an application that started with, uh, from a, a footballer from Manchester United who had more, more money than cents. Uh, in <laughs> <laughs> he wants to create the first uh, art artificial tree. Uh, uh, this is a better application in, uh, in shipping. Uh, if you take, for example, this uh, sail here, you get four, 40 square meters of, uh, say, of exposure from one side. This is surface area, 40 square meters on the other side. 80 square meters of photovoltaic panel, it's, there's a lot of energy being, uh, being created there. Yeah. And again, you have the, the wind on top of, uh, on top of that. Uh, <coughs> so if I can uh, put a few conclusions in my, uh, in my talk, uh, and maybe it's time to uh, retire. Uh, uh, so for the first time, uh, So for the first time, we produced continuous flexible piezoelectric filaments uh, at a very fast uh, rate. We demonstrated that the 3D space uh, does work, and uh, 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 we can make it at very good uh, production rates. Uh, hybrid piezoelectric photovoltaic films have been, uh, and fibers have been uh, uh, created. Uh, it says five international awards. We, we have received more than 11 international awards so far. Uh, and Fiber Lock Company was established in 2013 from laboratory to commercialization. Uh, this is, the company hasn't produced a product yet because we want to bring it into the stage where we feel it, it, it is, uh, it can be produced at the uh, uh, right cost and uh, right quality as well. Uh, they, those of you who are uh, f uh, football supporters or follow uh, UK's football teams, uh, Bolton is not in the first Premier. The Premier used to be, but they dropped one uh, 
one notch. Uh, the Infabel company is uh, supporting, uh, supporting them with the T-shirt, so you can see our uh, company's name on the, uh, uh, the T-shirts. Uh, again, for those academics that they wish to read a little bit more, uh, this is a, a list of uh, uh, pa papers, uh, uh, that you can find out more information about our uh, fiber and the, uh, the 3D structure. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and uh, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh,